Hey, welcome back to my channel. Steve here from the NeverEnding Projects list. If you've seen my website, you know I make a lot of 3D printed hard lures. And if you've watched my last video, you know I'm starting to dabble a little in soft plastics too. In this video, I'm going to throw some 3D printing into that mix and try to print some hand poured molds to see if that's a feasible option. So let me show you what I'm going to make today. All right, this is a Reaper. It's a leech type bait, I guess, and it's about four and a half inches long. I figured this is uh, something basic to try to start with. Should be a pretty easy thing to copy. This is actually one I hand poured back in the early 90s from a plaster mold cast from one of the original ones. I don't have any more original ones. So we're gonna copy my copy. I don't know who originally made these, but I think they've been around since the 60s. You can see there's very minimal detail on there, so should be a pretty easy design to come up with, but let's uh, jump into the CAD and see if we can reproduce this. Okay, here we are over in Fusion 360. Uh, I'm getting a little more comfortable with this, so I'm going to try to do this whole thing in Fusion this time. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a plane and start a sketch, and I'm going to draw a four and a half inch line. This is going to be used for reference when I bring in my picture. So I'm just going to center this line using the measure tool. And then I'm going to finish this sketch, start another sketch here, let's see, and select that same plane. And I'm going to insert my picture. I am only going to be using a top view on this. When I get to the side view, I'm just going to visually look at the lure and design from it. So I'm just going to get this going. I'm going to rotate it in the right direction. Uh, where am I going? I need to go back up here and scale it now. So I'm just going to drag the little corner and I'm just going to match up the picture with the four and a half inch line I drew. Uh, a little bit bigger maybe. And then I'm just going to move it where it lines up with that. Looks about right. And maybe rotate it around a little bit. Just make sure it's straight enough. Eh, I'm just going to leave it where it was. So next thing I do, I'm going to go into the sculpt environment. And I'm going to start a box. I'm going to use that same plan I drew the picture on. And just create a box that's about the size of the lure. Close enough, then I'm just going to drag it wider, a little wider than I need it. And I'm going to add my little sections in that I'm going to be working off of. Again, I kind of just eyeball these and figure out what I need. I guess a little more is better than a little less. You can always add or take them out later as you need. The only thing when I do these side ones, I want to make sure one of the lines is straight down the middle of the lure. Because uh, this is going to allow me to do my uh, symmetry. Just setting up some uh, selection options here. Now I gotta go in and add my symmetry so it does both sides of the lure at the same time. And simple as that. And now I'm gonna start modifying this. And I'm just gonna start pushing and pulling the dots and uh, moving the faces and stuff like that. This is a pretty boring process to watch and you're not gonna learn anything by watching me. There's a lot better tutorials out there. So I'm going to fast forward through most of this and uh, catch up at the end here when it's all done.
detail to the top of this. So what I did is I created an offset plane from the bottom here, just that's what we're going to work off of. And I drew this sketch. This is what the detail is going to be cut into this body. I'm not going to bore you with the details of actually drawing this, but I used a rectangle uh, pattern did it and it just cut out what I wanted. So the next thing we're going to do is do an extrude where you're going to select all of this and it's going to be an offset from object and you're going to select your object which is the top of the bait. I'm going to go negative 0.03 because I want it to cut it into the bait and we're going to change this. It's going to do it automatically. Change that to cut. We're going to hit OK. Uh, failed to project some remote surfaces. Okay, for some reason it missed these two in the sketch. I don't know why. I'm going to figure that out and then we'll get back to this. Alright, went back in and got that to work. So cut them all out. I don't know what I did to get it to work, but I got it to work. So that's all that matters. And I also went in and rounded all the corners off. So that was kind of boring. So we cut that out. But here we are. So next thing we're going to do is going to go to the side view. Start another sketch on the side plane. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. And we're just going to get a measurement here. Say from here, say 25, uh, maybe 26. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to chop off the bottom here so it has a nice uh, flat area to work off of. So we're going to finish that sketch. Again, go to extrude. We're going to do symmetric cut and that's going to be two inches give or take and there we go we got a nice flat bottom it's going to be easier to pour once we make the mold box which is what we're going to do right now so I am going to start a new sketch uh, create sketch on this flat bottom we're just going to draw a rectangle let's say five let's say 1.5 in uh, Fusion here. I'm used to working in SolidWorks. I did that totally wrong. How about 0.75? There we go. And we'll, we'll just do 2.5. Alright, finish that sketch. Next we're going to do is do an extrude. We're going to select this, make sure we grab everything. And we want to go down, so we're going to go negative 75. Make sure it's a new body. Okay, there we go. There's my box. So now to actually create the mold, we're going to go up to modify and we're going to do combine. And your target body is going to be your mold box and your tool body is going to be your reaper. And we're going to cut, hit OK, and there we go. There's my mold box. I'm just going to come in and uh, Round these corners off so it's less to print. 75. That's pretty good. I like to round the top off too. 105. And, and I always add just a little, a little bit of a chamfer on the bottom just so I don't get elephant's foot when I'm printing if uh, my Z height's not straight. But uh, here we go. Here's my mold box. And uh, next thing to do, I'm going to print this out, and then we're going to pour some uh, Reapers. All right, next thing I did was import this into my slicer. I use uh, Simplified 3D, and I set up some processes here. For uh, settings, I'm using a 10-layer height. I'm using six top layers, which is kind of a lot, but I want to make sure this thing holds up to the heat of plastisol. Uh, I'm only using three bottom layers, because that doesn't matter, and then I'm using four outlines. And... I'm doing the first one at 25% infill, but I'm also going to do another one at 80% just to see if uh, how they hold up and see if there's any difference. But that's what I got so far. I am using two different processes, and that's just because, let me show you here, the bottom uh, 15 or 20 layers just print at 20 layer height just so it prints a little faster and changes to 10 layer height once I get into the detail of the actual bait. But other than that, uh, we're going to print a couple of these off and uh, see what happens. So let's go do that. All right, I didn't want to bore you with another uh, printing time lapse, but here's the finished molds. Uh, they came out looking great, so I have some high hopes for these. Gonna run over to the other bench and uh, start pouring some molds. 
All right, we're gonna give these uh, two uh, Reaper molds a shot. This one's printed at 25% in PLA, and this one's printed at 80%. I have no idea if these things are actually gonna hold up to the heat, but we're gonna see what happens. That's the point of this whole test. Just gotta let this plastisol heat up. I already mixed the color in. It's like a hot pink with some uh, funky glitter in it, but we'll see what happens. Okay, let's hope for the best here. It's only hand poured like twice, so we'll see how this goes. Not too bad. fill that one a little bit see what happens all right just gonna let those cool down and uh see how they work see if that mold holds up all right time to see if these uh molds worked oh that's pretty cool just like the original I'll have to show a comparison later on. Mold looks like it held up too. That was the 25% one. Definitely got a better pour on that one. The tail's nice and round. Yeah, I'm happy with these. Maybe a little more glitter in there. Throw them in the, throw them in the bath over here. Give them a little cure and pour a couple more. All right, as you can see here, I've poured quite a few more, just testing out different colors and uh, glitters and stuff like that. Did some pinks and purples. This green and blue are actually uh, from Perlex uh, powder pigment from Hobby Lobby. But as far as the molds, they've held up perfect, man. Both of them, even the 25% one, no problems with them whatsoever. So. So far, so good. All right, here's a comparison between the ones I just redid and the ones I hand poured about 25 years ago. Clearly, these first ones are the ones we just recopied, but these are ones that were copied from the original one and the plaster molds. Uh, there are two different versions. This one has like a, a cut-in pattern like I did, and then this one over here has a raised pattern. And this one over here might actually be original. It's a little stiffer than the, the ones I hand poured, so probably should have used that for a copy. It also has a fatter head than this one, so maybe there was a different, a couple different versions back in the day. I don't remember. That was a little too long ago, but uh, overall I'm happy with the ones I did. I think they're uh, a lot better than the ones I did 25 years ago. So next I'm going to try to do some uh, laminates and uh, mixed pours and see what happens. All right, for this one, we're just going to try to do a, a laminate pour. I'm just going to try to do a little stripe up the back. Kind of fill the head. We'll come in with some pink for the tail. Another one going here. I don't know how these are going to come out, but it's a good experiment. Oops, got a little crazy there. Try to stir that up a little bit. None of my glitters in there. Ooh, that other one kind of bubbled up. All right, see what happens there. Might be too late. Just trying to get rid of the bubbles. 
and we'll let that cool down and see if that worked out. See how these came out. Not too bad. I really wasn't going crazy with any colors. These are just what I had already mixed up. But it didn't come out too bad. Oh, I like that one. A little darker. Alright, I got one more idea I want to try, but it's going to take me a day to figure out. So, once again, we'll be back. Alright, so this is the other idea I wanted to try out. I basically uh, I took the Reaper and I cut the tail off it and just made this little mold, which produces these little things, which is kind of a cool little bait all in itself. I'll have to give those a shot just like that, but once I poured those, I'm not going to actually show you pouring that because it's no different than pouring a full one, but I just uh, stick it back in the mold like that and pour another color around it. And these are what I get. Get a two color with a nice clean line kind of. That one I a little over poured it, but it doesn't get the best lamination. I do get a little bit of separation at the front here. I probably could heat up the bait a bit but with a heat gun, but I'm kind of afraid to melt the mold, so I don't want to do that. Like this one you can see a little better. I could actually take a soldering iron and just melt those back together if I really wanted to. But they come out pretty cool. Just did a couple of different colors, some green and blue, and then the opposite of that. But overall, pretty happy with that. I think uh, pouring the two colors at the same time works a little better for the lamination-wise, but I'm just doing these for myself, so it's not like I'm uh, selling them or anything, so I'm happy with the results. All right, I got one more printed hand mold to show you before we move along. And this is a crayfish I'm working on. This one works out pretty well too. Printed pretty good. And they come out looking like this. This I think was one of my first pours, so I kind of tore a leg off and it's got a little bit of flashing, but it worked out pretty well. The next evolution of this mold is I made this little uh little ball thing that just sticks in the back here. If I can get in there without looking. And this actually allows me to pour and leave a cavity for the jig head I'm using basically comes out looking like this which it still has a hole in the back from the sticking it in there and it's a little thin but came out pretty good and the last evolution I'm actually gonna be able to pour the jig head right in there don't worry about my tricolor mold I was just using up some scraps when I printed this the other thing about this when I print these the first pour these little uh, some of these little points stick up and I have to sand it flat again but that's only the first one so let me show you how I do this because it's a little different with all these little tight little details in there. You can't really just pour those in. I do a little uh, funky trick to get those down, but let me heat up some plastic and I'll show you that process. Okay, now that I got my uh, two colors heated up because this is going to be a two color mold, I just want a little bit of blue in the claws because I'm trying to match this certain uh, crayfish. I'll show you. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of blue in there. Once that's going, then I'm just going to fill this up. And I'm going to fill it up a lot. Because you can't really hand pour these little details. So I just go over them completely. And once I get everything covered, I'll just come back with my little uh, stirring stick here and scrape the top flat. I can just come back and... Uh, Fill in my brown a little bit, make sure my jig head's covered. And tail's filled in. So once that sets up, we'll be back. All right, now that this has had time to set up, I can try to remove it. And to do that, I gotta start by removing all this flashing. So to do that, I'm just gonna run my finger along the edges here and just peel it all away. Clearly, this is no way to do a production run, but for just uh, one-off lures for myself, I don't mind doing the extra work. Might have filled this one in a little too much, but we'll clean it up. Let me uh, fast forward through this part. Gonna need a little trimming because I overfilled it a little too much but let me see if I can get this out of here without screwing it up
too bad. It's going to need some cleanup. Clearly this stuff uh, just gets pulled off around the hook. But came out pretty good. Let me get some light here. The back's nice and sealed. I just got to clean up the little bit of flashing and uh, go from there. Just gonna throw this in my bath and uh, finish it up off camera. Okay, here's the finished bait after a little bit of cleanup. Just uh, removed a lot of that flashing. I mean, there's still a little bit, but overall, everything came out great. That uh, jig head's nice and closed in there now. It's got my nice two color I was going for. It's not a perfect match, but I haven't really played around with the colors too much. But you can see those uh, 3D printed lines on there actually give this bait a pretty cool texture. So. That worked out pretty well. And as far as uh, proof of concept goes, I think uh, 3D printed open pour molds is actually working pretty good. I mean, the only little issue I had was with these uh, sticking up a little bit after that first pour, but those get sanded flat. I probably made a dozen of these so far, a dozen pours anyway, and it's held up pretty good. So I think the next step is gonna be to try some 3D printed injection molds and see how that works out. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.